Hi friends, Don Wilson here. Little um, extracurricular activity while we're all trapped inside during the quarantine. Uh, it's a project that I've been meaning to get to probably for close to a year now. It's um, This is a horn for a 5-inch Berliner, uh, one of the camera Reinhardt machines. Uh, quite some time ago, somebody uh, bought a, uh, some 5-inch Berliner reproductions off me and um, I found out that gentleman had written a book about the K&R machine and it turned out to be um, Mark Caruana. So I asked him if he knew where I could get access to a machine and he had suggested uh, Mr. Dave Homewood on the other side of the pond in England uh, who had spent quite a bit of time at numerous museums and had developed uh, the blueprints for one of the uh, the wood base uh, model machines and he even handmade this horn. So when I reached out to uh, Dave Homewood I had mentioned that I was interested in making a reproduction and he was nice enough to uh, gift me this horn that he had made really quite lovely and it's a really great reproduction uh, just like all of his projects that uh, he's sent me pictures of uh, really quite a craftsman so uh, if uh, if one were to take some of the paint off it this would fit right in perfectly with uh, one of the um, early Berliner um, wood base continual hand crank machines uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this old 7-inch uh, mold. I'm going to cut a hole in it. And uh, I've already filled in this with a bit of clay and created an indentation. So in, in the copies, I'll know where to drill and use a, uh, die grinder to clean up the inside. Um, so I cut a hole in this piece of silicone here, set the horn like so, and then I'm going to uh, brush on some thickened silicone onto here. Uh, that'll require uh, two to three layers. And then finally it'll get a, uh, a support shell made out of a uh, fiberglass filled polyurethane. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to uh, do some cleaning and uh, gloves and prepare materials and uh, then I'll get to show you the next steps. As you can see that 7 inch disc mold has been cleaned up and now we've got some two part silicone in a Philadelphia water ice bucket and uh, it's not a a lot. This is going to be a uh, multi-step process. Uh, so I've measured out 300 grams of a uh, platinum silicone. We've now got uh, that 300 grams of uh, relatively low viscosity silicone. And to that, I'm going to add uh, bit by bit, um, just a few grams at a time, of uh, fumed silica. This is a powder which is sold specifically for thickening uh, silicone. It was dusty enough, I had to walk over and turn my ventilation system on for a few minutes. So what we have now is this Try to get all the surfaces prepped and I tell you it feels luxurious not having to vacuum degas this. With um, 
You'll notice it's all full of air. And to think of using that for making a record would be unimaginable. So we'll set that there. So the goal is to get a, a thin coat on the, the first try. Make sure that uh, we capture uh, all the details as best as possible. Try to get those air bubbles out just by letting the silicone run all over. And then that will build up the thickness for the strength in the uh, second and third coats. Okay, so it's been about an hour with the help of a uh, heat lamp right here. The silicone is mostly set. I've mixed up uh, 400 grams. I have another water ice bucket. They don't pay me any royalties, by the way. <laughs> so I'm going to I'll mix 200 grams of old molds that I've just ground up with a, a super heavy-duty hand crank meat grinder I picked up uh, on a trip to Kansas with Nancy a while ago. And I'm going to mix these guys up. It's important to mix the silicone first so that the part A and part B can interact so that the catalyst can reach all the activation sites on the other component. The um, scrap silicone was well cleaned with uh, soap and water and then solvent dried, cut into little pieces a pair of shears and grinding this stuff um, uh, it is some really good exercise <laughs> that does get around doesn't it So the reason why silicone works has a um, has mold making material is it doesn't stick to anything other than silicone. Uh, so the nice thing is that uh, something like an old mold, if one has the fortitude to grind it up, uh, that it can be uh, reused like that. This is a bit runnier than I expected. Okay, friends, last coat. You'll notice that the, <laughs> the um, part with the ground filler is mostly attached. I've also added this strip here uh, to be a alignment mark. Uh, that was uh, another scrap uh, from a mold. Uh, unfortunately, that one was from a record I really liked. But so goes uh, the craft. Uh, so I have the um, last bit of silicone uh, already mixed up with some fumed silica powder.
Okay, so here we have the silicone mold sitting inside half of the support shell using uh, cardboard and clay. I made the dividing line here and have since removed that. Then uh, painted it with a, a nice heavy coat of paste wax. I've mixed up the second half of the support shell and I'm getting ready to apply that now. Okay friends, it's been 24 hours since we started this project, give or take, and I just got ready to uh, cast the first copy. Uh, here we have the support shell that I've already taken apart. You'll notice the uh, alignment notch deep in that one. That's going to accept uh, that spot there. I'll show you the inside of the mold. Get all that nice detail. And here's the horn that I pulled out just a little while ago. Uh, it does take a little bit of work to get the uh, two halves of the support shell uh, apart from each other, even with, even with a liberal coat of wax. That is quite a powerful adhesive. Uh, the nice thing about having this level of texture on the uh, support structure and the silicone mold is that uh, it might be a little difficult to get together, but when you've got it just right, you certainly know it. And when you have it just right, everything seats perfectly. Uh, and that includes this, uh, uh, in order to uh, remove the original and then um, soon to remove the copies, I cut this uh, slit all the way up to about here. And when we have it inside uh, this uh, slightly larger than half uh, support shell, it all fits together quite nice. And um, that should make for a really minimal seam. So we put this guy together and it goes together quite nice. And I've got this old seven inch mold. That's going to be a really beefy rubber band. It's a real serious piece of uh, silicone. Here's another. 7 inch mold with a smaller hole. What I did with those was I took some metal tubing laying around and put it on my 12 ton hydraulic press and just pressed with a few tons of force that steel tubing into the silicone and eventually it split. Uh, so looking at this uh, it would be really difficult to guess I'm trying to find some light for you. <laughs> uh, it would be really hard to guess where the seam is. Uh, it just really uh, goes together quite nice. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up some resin which is intended for uh, rotocasting. Uh, rotocasting resin is different from uh, other types of resin in that uh, it sets gradually. Uh, most resins, they set all at once. 
uh, you know, you're, you're kind of slushing it around inside of a mold, and then all of a sudden uh, it just goes, huh, and it's solid. Uh, rotocasting resins, they give quite a bit of warning. Uh, the viscosity really increases quite a bit, and then uh, eventually they set. And in that interim, uh, as they thicken and start to set, uh, you can make sure that there's a, a nice consistent coat across the mold. And uh, that's typically, you know, done by hand, just by rotating uh, this mold. That's why there's such a substantial uh, lip here, is that I intended this for rotocasting. Uh, so, uh, they also call it a slush mold. So, you know, doing something like this. Uh, coincidentally, that's also uh, how they make the uh, the hollow chocolate rabbits, is uh, they have a machine do it, of course, but uh, they, they spin the mold around. And the lip is to keep that excess resin from leaking out. Uh, of course, there's going to be some thicker spots and some thinner spots, but, you know, that's what happens when things are handmade. <laughs> uh, so in a moment, we'll uh, have um, uh, the first copy, and then we can compare that to the original. Okay, so I added about 150 grams of uh, resin into uh, the mold with its support shell on and uh, you know gently uh, spun it around uh, getting lots of uh, angle and everything to it uh, you know back and forth uh, one uh, two different times uh, 150 grams each uh, making this about three quarters of a pound and uh, one time orienting it towards the back, the other time orienting it towards the front. Um, rotocasting isn't something that I typically do, or uh, slush molds, so um, will that be enough? I don't know. So let's find out. The, uh, the front is still quite thin. As an added bonus, the uh, the lip here, um, I don't know if you can see it, The uh, that recycled bit of mold that I used, it uh, picked up the detail, the grooves out of the, uh, the record quite well. That's funny. So I'm going to be real gentle with this because I'm not quite sure if it's thick enough. And if it is too thin in spots, uh, then... Uh, even with it out of the mold, I can uh, simply block off the back end and uh, slush around uh, another 100 grams or so. But if it breaks, then it's just broken. Copy number one. So excited. Always excited to see copy number one. It shows you whether or not all the work has been worthwhile or not. So the back is heavy. I can feel that um, well the front is heavier uh, but the uh, the front just feels light. I don't know. Not important. Uh, so let's get to the important part. Well, there you have it. That's all. Um, with a mold made. It's, uh, it's easy to start making several of them, and uh, it's been a little bit more laborious than I expected to uh, get down the process of uh, rotocasting these, uh, but with a little work, they're coming out. Uh, I've still ended up using a die grinder uh, going in through the back and uh, cleaning up the inside and then going in here and putting on one more coat uh, just to make sure that they're uh, nice and sturdy. Um, but also 
uh, pretty good looking. So with uh, a nice coat of gold paint uh, there on the, uh, the relief carvings and on the inside. This one will look quite nice. Uh, they're rated for a fairly high temperature. Uh, this resin was used specifically for the temperature rating. And uh, many people will be able to have these uh, to display for years to come. So thanks for watching. Uh, questions, comments, doninphilly at gmail.com. And uh, hey, get out there and pour some silicone over your rare item so other people can have copies. Thanks.